What up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's your guy. Something, something, something. Hit the keys. And I know I normally bring you guys plug-in reviews and gear reviews, but my guy Evan over at Studio Link has created some software that allows the average Joe like you and me to create plugins with ease. Um, instead of doing the normal, typical walkthrough that I do, um, I'm actually going to make a series out of this and I'm going to walk you guys through all the steps that I take in order to create the plugin. Uh, make sure if you guys do like this content, though, you drop a whole elbow on that like button, hit subscribe and that notification bell. So every time we bring you guys a new video, you can be the first to see. But let's go ahead and create this plugin. Some, some, some hit the key. All right, guys. So I guess let's start from the beginning. So once you get Rompler and you download it, it's going to be in your program files. And then you're going to have to come down here to a studio linked file. You're going to open it up and then you're going to open up Rompler. This is not a plugin. This is a standalone application. So then once you click on this right here, boom, it's going to bring up Rompler and Rompler looks just like this. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and we're going to maximize this window. And so as you see here, um, it only has a couple windows. So it has your mapping editor. So this is how you're going to do all the mapping of your sounds. Um, and then it has a GUI editor right here. So this is pretty cool because you can make your own GUI in this. Um, they've got some different um, backgrounds and stuff like that you can use. All these knobs and everything are movable, you know, so you can move them. You can make them as big as you want. You know, you can do whatever you want with your GUI. So if you wanted to design something in Photoshop, make it look super nice and then come over here, you can import knobs, you can import meters, you can import all this stuff and you can make this GUI look however you want. And then you also have right here, which is your Audi, audio MIDI settings. Um, so this is important because you're going to have to make sure that you click on your keyboard so that you can test your sounds. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my key lab now because I know that once I get a sound imported in here, uh, I'm going to want to test it out and see what it sounds like. So let's go ahead and we're going to make a sound first. So let's hop out of here for a second um, and then pull FL Studio back up. So boom, I'm gonna pull FL Studio back up. We're gonna make a patch on my ASM Hydrosynth, um, and then we're going to import that into FL Studio, and then we're going to export it out into Rompler. So let's go ahead and we're gonna hop into a top-down view. So when you look at the Hydrosynth, the Hydrosynth looks like this. We're just gonna go ahead and hit initialize real quick. So boom, initialize the patch. So we just have this uh, basic saw sound. That's not the sound we're gonna use though. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go into our oscillator number one and we're going to find which waveform it is that we want to use. Um, so I think I'm going to mess with one of these uh, sync labs. They sound like this. So that's what we're going to start with. We're not going to get too deep into sound design in this video and I'm not going to get too extra into building this patch. I'm just going to build a basic patch, something so I can show you how we're going to get started. So now that I know that I want to use this right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here in a voice and I'm going to hit voice again one more time. I want to take that vibrato out. So now it just basically sounds like that. So that's what our start's going to be. So now what I want to do is I'm going to come over here to my cutoff knob and I'm going to turn the cutoff down because I want to cut out some of those high frequencies. So. So now that's what it kind of sounds like. Um, so now what we're going to do next is I'm going to come over here into my pre effects and in my pre effects, um, what I want to do is I want to uh, we're going to go to rotary. So now with this rotary. Let's turn this dry wet up a little bit. All right, so that sounds all right. I like the way that that sounds. Let's go ahead and turn up this high speed just a little bit. All right, so now it's starting to sound a little buttery. We haven't done much, but it still sounds pretty good. So let's come over here to reverb. Let's turn our dry wet up to, I don't know, about 10%. I don't want a hall reverb. I think I want a room reverb. All right, so that sounds all right to me. So now I'm gonna come over here to delay and we're gonna turn the delay up just a little bit. And 
we're going to change the mode type. So let's see what this reverse sounds like. Turn the wet tone up a little bit. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to throw this lo-fi effect on here as well. So I'm going to come on over here until I get to the lo-fi effect. Um, let's turn this up 100%. I like lo-fi too, so let's go ahead and hit this lo-fi too real quick. And we can change the filter type. All right, so I think I'm good with that right there. Um, so I want to do a couple more things. I want to mess with this drive and this morph real quick. Turn it up just a little bit more. All right, so now I'm good with that patch. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly record one note. I'm just going to record the C, um, the C5 real quick. Um, so let's go ahead and go over here to this screen right here. You can record it in the Edison. That's probably what I'm going to do in the future. But for the sake of this demonstration today, I'm just going to record it on the playlist really quick. So let's go ahead and hit this. All right, so now we have a sound. So now we can do one of two things. So since we have Rompler open, we can simply export this out because obviously if we export it out, we can control the parameters, whether it's 24 bit, 16 bit, whatever it is that we want to make it. Um, so what you can do is simply uh, come over here and export, you know, wave file to wherever we'll just call it one. We'll call it one, two, two, <laughs> super creative. Um, and then you can come over here and you can figure out however it is that you want to export it. So boom, you can export it just like that. Um, so it's exported for me. What else you can do if you're using FL Studio is that you can simply take this wave right here and drag it and drop it and it'll automatically do it for you. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and, and uh, close down FL Studio. So now you have your key range start. So with your key range start, this is basically what the key is going to start on. So one tip that I can give you guys is always remember that your keys obviously go in increments of 12. So a C is going to be 1, 13, 25, so on and so forth, 37, you know, so on and so forth, all the way down. And it's going to be in increments of 12. So I'm going to leave it at 60 so that it leaves the C on C5 for me. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and range this up real quick and then you can just push import. All right, guys. So once we've mapped our sounds, we can easily stretch it like this all the way across all of the notes or we can leave it as it is. So like right now, if I push some keys in. So bam, that's what we created, um, but it's not going to play anything lower. So I'm pushing notes all lower than C5 on my keyboard. Um, but if I stretch this out, it will. You know, it'll gather all those notes. So one thing that I do recommend is exporting every C. So C1, C2, C3, C4, C5. And I also recommend exporting your Fs and then just making your note ranges go six. So it preserves as much of that original sound of whatever patch it is that you made. Because when you resample all the way across all of these notes, just one note, they're not all gonna resample properly. So to get the best sound quality, spend a little extra time and make sure that you do, um, you grab your sounds from C and F of every single octave. So now we have over here, um, we have different instrument settings. So we have like right here, you know, you can name your, your Rompler. So you can name it whatever you want. We're going to name it something just for now. Um, you can put your company name underneath that. You can make it uh, mono or poly, either one. You got glide time, you got ADSR, 
You got LFO, uh, Def and Ray. I mean, you have a lot of stuff underneath the hood that you can actually use to dive in and build a different sound. You know, you have some saturation right here. So the sound sounds like uh, this. But we can add some saturation. So you hear how it's got a little bit of that distortion there. You can hear it more as we add more. Um, you have filter cutoffs and stuff like that right here as well. So you have a few different uh, filter types. Um, so. So you can really dial in and mess with that. You also have the slope here. You have chorus, so you can mess with your chorus if you want to. You know, so you can totally jack it up if you want to, or obviously you can leave it good if you want to. You have phaser down here as well. So that's pretty cool. Um, underneath that, you have delay. So you can turn your delay on. So that's cool. And obviously we have reverb right underneath that. We all love reverb. Then you have a limiter features and stuff like that. There's another feature here as well. So sometimes when you're putting your notes in, like the sample won't start as you want it to start or it won't continuously play. So if you hold down a note, it won't continuously play. I'm not having that problem right now. As you can see, it'll play forever. Um, but if you do have that problem, um, I believe that you can come in here to loop start and mess with this and change this and then leave it as, put it as forward, and it'll fix that issue for you. But I'm not having that issue. And so again, messing with this is very easy, but you do wanna make sure that you do the right things. So you don't wanna get yourself in a lawsuit. So you don't wanna be breaking terms of agreements of other plugins that you get. Um, you know, you wanna cultivate all these sounds yourself. Um, so, for me, this is gonna be a pretty fun journey. Uh, I'm willing to take you guys' input. So if there's any kind of sounds that you guys would like me to get, like I said, I'm gonna get different kind of synths, different kind of outboard gear in order to sample. I'm gonna try to get some instruments to sample and all that good stuff. So uh, we're gonna try to put our foot into this plugin and make it a really solid one for the producer community. Uh, make sure if you guys do like this content though, you drop a whole elbow on that like button, hit subscribe and that notification bell so every time we bring you guys a new video, you can be the first to see. Appreciate you guys' time as always, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. All right, guys and gals, thanks for watching the video. Uh, make sure you hit the subscribe and like button. Uh, make sure you hit that notification bell so every time a new video comes out, you can be the first to know. Uh, let me know what tutorials you want to see next in the comments, and see you next time. Some, some, some hit the key.